Um, I think once I knew that Destin, because he's like, you know, a chosen brother, once I knew he was adapting it, I read the book because I wanted to know what he was up to. I was sort of amazed by this story. Um, and then eventually when it uh, came around and I got the part, um, read the book again, and I'm just continued to be inspired and amazed by her honesty. Um, well, the person, Jeanette, is so strong and funny and insightful and full of forgiveness, and she's incredibly resilient, and that's a quality that I, I really admire about her, is that she is completely herself and not trying to be anybody else other than that, and that person that she is is magnetic. Um, it's a it's a tough childhood that she grew up in, but ultimately she has only love and forgiveness and has gone on to do incredible things. Well, it's different because instead of instead of spending a lot of time researching it from different angles, like for Room, I had to talk to like five different specialists in different areas to try and understand and assemble who Ma was. In this case, I only needed to go to one person and that was her. It meant having a lot of conversations because you know I'm playing her from quite a large scope of her life too. And, and I wanted to understand her from like her intimately. Um, but it was so great. I loved that it was just as simple as having a conversation, picking up the phone, sending an email. Well, I, I do find that Rex is a fascinating guy. I mean, he's definitely a flawed character, but that's kind of what makes him interesting. Um, he, he loved his kids, which is something I can really relate to. Uh, and... You know, sometimes he was pretty great at expressing that love, and then other times he had a few issues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did talk to Jeanette. Uh, you know, I got to see he, there's some stuff of him on video. There's some stuff that he wrote. Uh, you know... I don't know. I I really felt like I had a bead on him pretty quickly. I guess because there are a lot of similarities between us, you know. Mm, I loved our weekends. We yeah, we'd all get together on on the weekend. We have these epic, um, huge dinner parties. Yeah, yeah, and we'd have picnics in the park, which were great. Uh, and it was, like, great because there were, like, you know, three sets of kids. <laughs> so there'd be, like, you know, a dozen kids and, well, I guess, you know, some older, some. Uh, but it, it was great having all these kids around. and Just a big family, yeah. big loud family. Yeah. <laughs> we definitely made ourselves known wherever we went. <laughs> He's just the coolest and the best. He's um, such a great, gentle soul, but great notes. Like, he'd come and he'd just know exactly what to do. And not, like, talking on and on with his like, notes, but just, like, very precise. Mm-hmm. And, and he's uh, always very calm. That's the part uh, that I'm always, it's that, like, those Maui vibes. Just yeah, run yeah, through yeah. It's like <laughs> he's not getting rocked by things, you know. There's a lot of moving parts on a set and a lot of different ways and reasons to get stressed out. And he never does. And he's also very open and very vulnerable himself, which I think just lends to actors being more open, too. No, it's our second time. No, we worked together on this movie called Rampart that Owen Moverman wrote and directed. And uh, that was an incredible experience because, honestly, the script, if you looked at the original script, it was a lot about uh, this guy was a cop and there was a lot of things going on at the, with the, his work and about, you know, there's stuff with these... Uh, gang gang bangers and there was very little to do with the family but Bree was so great and she was only like 20 
And she came in and she was so great, so strong, had such great ideas and choices and could improvise in a way that was kind of mind-blowing for how old she was, especially. And, uh, you know, suddenly the script, everything started shifting until the story became more about the family and, well, particularly our relationship in it, you know. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of kind of cool that she, just the force of how great she was, managed to shift the entire movie <laughs> to a completely different storyline. So but that's it was from the there. testimony to how great she was. So oh, I knew God. she was great, and getting to work with her again has just been a dream and a blessing. And, I mean, my side of it is that I had an incredible scene partner, and he was so amazing to work with, and there was just... I don't know. It doesn't happen all the time, but you know, the, in that film, like the first time we met was in a scene uh, on the set of that movie, and it was immediately like alchemy, and you could tell that there was just like a lot there. And you know, he really like took me under his wing at that time. And I remember after like a day of doing crying scenes together, he came over and like put his arm around me and was like, "Can I make you a smoothie?" And I was like. I would like that (laughs) and that was kind of it we've been part of each other's lives for a really long time and so I think it's that that love and that vulnerability that we've shared with each other already just really lent itself to this film we were able to let go very quickly well I know Brie feels the same way I do We, we don't really want to be saying here's the message you should You know, that's for whatever anyone picks out of it. But it's something interesting about this, about the book and also about the movie that it's, you know, about this family and everybody who has a family, which is uh, most people, Mm -hmm. uh, can relate to it and has been powerfully moved by it and also experienced a lot of laughter with it as well. So... It's like a cool thing, man, to be a part of this. Yeah, it is. Really cool. It is. The power of reflection. You know, I think this is a film about the power of reflection and how we can misunderstand things and lose each other along the way, but ultimately forgiveness brings us back.